Good morning. Good morning, Olivier. Um, so welcome to the session, um, the future of the LP1 industry. And uh, we're going to dive into um, uh, low power wide area networking. Hold on one minute. All right, um, Lina just came in. It's always great time working at home. Um, so um, yeah, um, so Olivier, can you uh, introduce yourself briefly? We'll yeah, so I am. So I am Olivier Seller. I am uh, forty-five years old. I've been working for Semtech for almost ten years now, uh, since uh, uh, two thousand twelve when Semtech acquired uh, CKO, uh, which is a company I confounded with uh, Nicolas Sornin, Francois Sforza, Francois Edé, and, the, and that company uh, is at the um, origin, is the inventor of, uh, of LoRa. So I've been working on LoRa for, um, for more than, well, for almost 15 years, or maybe 12 years. And, it, uh, and the first um, implementation of LoRa, the first uh, test where, where, where from, from my home and from Nico, uh, Nico's home. So that's, uh, that's what we've done. We've been working on that for, for a very, very long time now. And, and we are really happy to see uh, the success and, and everything that, that, that came on top, on top of it, uh, the LoRa one, the networks and so on. Yeah. The ecosystem, that's, that's, really, uh, that's really great. And did you expect uh, that before? Uh, of course not, but uh, it's 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 great to see. Uh, I mean, I'm an engineer, so um, uh, I've done a lot of R and D, and many things don't work or don't succeed, and sometimes they they do they do come up um, with a, with a nice success. And uh, uh, yeah, it's great to see that uh, the, uh, the what I've designed uh, or all the bugs I have introduced in the design are now replicated uh, uh, <laughs> in millions. Yeah, nice. So, yeah. Okay, well, hopefully we we can uh, we can get to that. Uh, also, guys, everyone watching, uh, please please feel free also to uh, drop questions in the chat. I'll keep an eye on that, and um, I have a list of questions as well. Uh, so it's really interview form. Um, so um, so LP WAN and uh, low power wide area networking. Where where are we today, and and what do you think is the future? Uh, so that's um, so on a non-technical uh, level. Uh, I, I believe the future for LP1 is really bright because we are we are part of the uh, digital transformation of the world. Uh, so that's 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 a long-term trend which is not going to stop. Uh, it's uh, the the technology is is mature, uh, but since it's a transformation of how people do business of how people do uh, industrial processes and so on uh, it's going to take a little bit of time so really the unknown is is the time when when a given market when, when a given mar vertical market is going to mature uh, for for lp1 and for lora one but there's no doubt that we're going to be part uh, the ecosystem is going to be part of that digital transformation and that we're going to be in many many places in the, in the industry yeah so that's that's um, that's that's a bright future so it, it's great to be part of it uh we yeah we yeah we, we're not to the end yeah no right i i i i, I agree indeed and 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 so technically yeah where we, how far you know are we so you know laura you know it's great in terms of you know receiver sensitivity low power long range um are we hitting the physical limits uh, what what are we how how much is possible uh, in the future, or or is it, or, or do you think the biggest technical challenges are not really in the communications, but more in you know integrations and uh, a way of thinking well, about the constraint devices? Oh, exactly. Uh, the uh, there are a little bit of progress that we can make on the on the radio level, uh, but uh, really what what we need to do is 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 to build uh, solutions that can scale. Uh, because now, now, now the story to mature, we need to scale so, uh, so that um, it's easy for customers to, to implement, to use, to deploy the solutions. Uh, so um, when, when it comes to technical improvements, what we need to do is, 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 is bring technical improvements which is scale. Because as far as long range, low power and cost are, are concerned, 
we are we are in the right ballpark. Yeah. Uh, so we we can improve a little bit there, here, there, uh, and 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 we will discuss uh, further. I think some of some some features, yeah. uh, some new features that are coming. Yeah. But really, what matters most is uh is 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 to have something complete, well integrated that can scale easily. Yeah. Uh, that you can easily provision the device, you can easily roam the device, you can easily connect the device to an application, etc. Yeah. That should be seamless. Right. And um, okay, so um, and and what, what uh, so what what is your contribution currently? So what do you do? You know, we we see you. I think um, uh, you know we saw you yet last year also and at the Things Conference. And um, I think people that are also members of Lore Alliance also see you in your role as the vice chair of the technical committee. But what do you do do on a on a daily basis? Or can you share some of your of your ongoing work? Oh yeah, yeah, certainly. So I, I'm I'm do, I'm really working on the uh, for for Semtech uh, and for Laura. I'm working on the physical layer. Mm -hmm. That's my main uh, focus. The, my focus has always been uh, modulation, uh, creating modulation options, creating the demodulator, and then using the modulation in 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 the most efficient way. Yeah. So um, so for instance, and that's something I I've shared already uh, so, uh, with the technical committee uh, within the technical committee uh, of the Alliance. Uh, I've worked on on uh, optimizing the number of repetition <clears throat> to improve uh, to improve uh, range and 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 um, and also um, capacity. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, maybe <clears throat> maybe I can share two slides on that. Yeah. Uh, which is the button? Um, so that's interesting. Also, that the things that you work on, um, those are not the the big technical challenges that we are facing in the future, right? So you, your part is done. You're basically making sure that the communication works and that uh, range is good, low power, and increasing network capacity. Um, but the big challenges are uh, more upstream, I would say, Integ integrating it, ease of onboarding. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't find the sharing button, sorry. Where's, where's that? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, there used to be. Did we test that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe not. Well, okay. um, uh, don't, people don't worry. Here, so, yeah, so. Uh, we'll get we'll get to that. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, there's a goal. Uh, I mean, we'll we'll get help on that uh, later. Let, let's continue. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yes, that was it. So, so, and uh, and also and also work for uh, on the um, on the new. Um, Chips of Semtech, yeah. uh, for instance, the gateway chips, uh, the uh, LR1110, the uh, LoRa Edge uh, chip. Uh, I'm working on point-to-point -point ranging features, uh, better the modulator and so on. That's really uh, something which is a bit hidden, yeah. and that's a good thing because if it's hidden, if, if people don't realize there's work on that, it means that yeah. it works fine, yeah. and uh, and the work is is is, is above. It's uh, it's something yeah. else we need which needs to be. Yeah, improved. well, it's the same same for us actually. Same for me also. All the the work that I usually do is also hidden. It's just uh, you know packet routing, and if it doesn't work, then you'll see that. But if it works, then you'll you know you just have your yeah. data yeah. in some yeah. charts somewhere. That uh, yeah, yeah, nice. So, so you're also you know you're also working from home I guess um, you know working on your laptop and you say yeah I work on the LR1110 I work on chips and but what does that look like you know what what is the what is the programming language that you use or are you drawing you know chip designs and and how how does your work end up from what you do on your computer to um, to actually uh, making the chips somewhere in a in a factory. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so that's 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 a long question. Uh, so it's uh, that's something for that's really interesting for engineers. It's the uh, chip digital programming language. Uh, there are two languages. The one is Verilog. The other one is VHDL. So Verilog is is a really fun language. It's super low level. Uh, once you know how to program in Verilog, you probably can uh, can design your own um, microcontroller. So that's really exciting that you can do that. It's really low level. You you you. You have a clock signal. You describe a clock signal. You describe what happens when the clock uh, on every clock edge. So that's uh, that's fun, and that's a bit weird. And uh, and I also do a lot of uh, scripting languages like uh, MATLAB or Python, like 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 most most of us. And uh, that's I, I what I like most is not really is not really coding because I'm trying to do less and less. What I like most is really doing uh, experiments, uh, tests. 
So coverage test, uh, uh, geolocation performance test, uh, Doppler resistance test of the modulation and demodulators. Uh, well, any any kind of test. And for that, I'm doing a live test uh, either in, in my home lab or or, or outside uh, drive test. That's 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 oh, yeah, uh, okay. that's that, that's a lot of fun. Actually, uh, you you know we've been locked down a few times uh, last year, and uh, I had the I have the right to drive my car to do drive tests during the lockdown ah. and my paper saying that you, you are allowed to do experiments. Nice. Uh, from Did you get stopped Nicholas by the police as well? No, I wasn't. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I was driving a car with an antenna on top. And, and, so and you, can also, out of the car. Um, you can also break the speed limits and you can drive faster because you need to test no, the Doppler I, effect. Or? I, I did, I, well... <laughs> Actually, I did, but of course, I'm not allowed to do that. Okay, cool. Hey, if you want to try sharing your screen again, it's the uh, in the bottom. You have five buttons uh, below uh, yes, my sir. face, and then it's the uh, fourth button with the screen. Uh, and there okay, you can do share okay. screen, and then uh, hopefully yeah, people share can screen. share side. Because I want to go back to the to indeed the the models that you did and and capacity and maybe you know the repetitions yeah, and yeah. SF. Um, and uh, I, I've seen some of your work on that, and I think it's really nice if you can share some of that with uh, with this group. So let's, uh, okay, so if I share my entire screen, so it's pro so um, yeah, that works. Do you see that? Do you see that? Yeah. So I see it. I so hope the audience for, sees it as well, but I guess so. Well, yeah. Sure. So for a given power budget, that's uh, imagine. So that the slide says for a given power budget repetitions. Optimize range. Is that the slide you're seeing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So every line here is for the same power budget, meaning you're either sending one SF12 frame or two SF11 frames or four SF10 or seven SF9. So it's the same power that that, that you're going to burn. Here is a success probability of receiving at least one of these frames. So these frames yeah. are repetitions. So either you have one or two or four or seven. And each color is for a different average signal level. Uh, so from ranging from one minus 100, one is 132 to minus 142. Uh, and here you see that for many signal levels, it's better to repeat. Uh, and if, if your signal level is such that you would have 70% chances of, of, of getting a valid uh, reception with SF12, then if you repeat, your success rate is going to improve up to 80%. And that's on the relay channel, meaning a very s a static device, uh, non-line of sight static device with, with, with multipath. So that's uh, really uh, the case for a static device. Uh, if the device is mobile, I don't have the graph for that, but it's, it's, it's even better. So it's always, it's, it becomes always better to repeat. But the conclusion of that simple graph here is that if you're a static device, uh, it's optimum, it's close to optimum to repeat four times. So, so using SF10 here, because if you start from 50, 60% success, you will be even at 60% success rate. But if your success rate at SF12, yeah. sorry, is higher, then you're going to increase that success rate. And if you're looking for uh, 90%, 95% uh, quality of service, then then you need to repeat. It's going to be much better. And yeah. and, and and for instance, at 90% uh, success rate, there is a one one color difference. So SF10 is as good as SF12 here. It's actually slightly better. And the difference here is 3 dB. So meaning that by repetition, uh, with the same budget, same power budget, you effectively increase range uh, a little bit. Uh, well. Well, three B is, is is not a little bit is, is a bit significant actually. Yeah. So that's um, repetition are good. So ADR strategy should should aim at at repeating each frame four times. And I have another one which is on a different subject. So that repetitions also increase the capacity or the quality of service. So it's, it's an example with uh, only five channels, and you transmit um, long frames seven times a day, and it's. Uh, your burn model with uh, with indoor light indoor 10 to 20 dB so it's light light to deep indoor I would say and uh, here is the gateway density so the more dense the denser your network is of course the more capacity you have here the capacity is expressed in uh, uh, density of devices so a number of devices per square kilometer 
And you see that um, when you transmit several times, of course, you transmit more power. You have more frames in the air, so you have more collisions, but you have much more opportunities of getting the frame through than getting a collision. Therefore, uh, you increase the capacity. And uh, basically, if you double the number of transmitted frames, uh, despite the fact that, you, that, that, that the channel is more loaded, you, you almost double uh, from one transmission to two transmission, you almost double the, the capacity. So that's pretty, uh, that's, yeah, I find it pretty, pretty nice uh, to see that both from the uh, capacity standpoint and the range standpoint, it's better to repeat. So that's, uh, that's one uh, uh, thing so I can stop sharing. Yeah, thanks. That's interesting. And that means also in practice, for example, for indeed uh, uh, network server vendors like me, that uh, we need to uh, change the way we look at ADR and not, um, uh, and also, end devices. By the way, they would they would rather send uh, join requests uh, four times at SF10 uh, than um, uh, yeah, one time yeah. at SF12. Right? That's that's practically yeah, yeah, what yeah. that means. Yeah. And, and, and also, uh, and also, uh, if you're very mobile, if you really don't know where you are, it's better to send many frames at SF7 than one or two frames at SF12 because you're, you're you're basically taking chances. If your channel changes that much. Well, it's 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 really a diversity yeah. strategy, like di diversify your portfolio in in in, in <laughs> on the stock yeah. market. It's really the same strategy. You yeah. don't don't put all your eggs in the same basket, and uh, and take chances, and that's going to be more successful. Yeah. Nice. That's okay, so that, that's 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 really interesting, and also good, you know, good uh, uh, visual to show your work, uh, right? So it's yeah. something you can you can really show. Um, so I, 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 I have one more thing uh, yeah. that I can share. It's, it's about um, uh, the, new, uh, the new gateways, uh, the uh, 1302 and 1303 based gateways. And, that's, uh, and maybe that's also in, going to interest uh, the, um, the uh, gateway manufacturers. I'm going to show you that. So the uh, 1302 and 1303 are the new... Um, are the new uh, Semtech is uh, is offering. We also offer a reference design with that, which is pretty small, pretty really really small. I'm going to show you that. Uh, so the uh, and the 1303 has timestamp embedded, uh, and here is is an example of a drive test. So I'm telling you, I was doing drive test of the performance of the timestamp. So the gateway would be here, the green point in the middle, and uh, it's. Here it's only point to point. There's a single gateway. It's not really locating, but I know where the device is. I know what the, the estimation of timestamp is. So when the timestamp is correct, there is no error. So the point is blue. And when the timestamp is, is too far, it's too big, uh, well, too, too late compared to the reality, then it, it, it corresponds to uh, this kind of errors. So here we see that when there are obstructions, potentially here, that's Neuchâtel. It's, it's the home place of uh, the same tech wireless and sensing. And it's really, really bad for for timestamps on geolocation because it's hilly, it's uh, unidimensional. There are a lot of reflectors here with masts of boats, sailing boats. That's, that's really one of the worst places to do uh, geolocation. So you can see that when it's, and it's really urban. So the um, uh, distribution of the timestamp error is something like 50% uh, of the cases, it's only 50 meters, and 90% uh, of the cases is, is around 200 meters. Uh, if you go to the uh, in in a suburban environment, it's much better. Uh, the timestamp error at 90% is probably around 60 or 70. And uh, the rule of thumb is, once you have four gateways seeing a device, the timestamp error is going to to become your location error. So um, four gateways in in such a urban environment are going to give you 200 meters roughly precision in in 90% of the cases. Uh, so that's for the timestamp part, but as the 1303, so is, is computing timestamp in a much more efficient way, much more, uh, well, much lower cost way than the pre uh, previous uh, reference design. And um, it's not only doing that, so it, it computes one timestamp, one kind of timestamp metric per LoRa symbol. And at the same time, it provides the uh, SNR uh, of that symbol. So you can have history of SNR per uh, 
for, for a given frame. So that's that's something I, I have never showed to 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 well I have not shown to many people. So that here's here's my my actually my place. So you see it's uh, a little bit of houses in the neighborhood and, and many crop fields around. So it's mostly uh, rural. And so that's drive test uh, where I was not driving too fast except maybe here. And each each of the color lines, uh, the color doesn't mean anything apart from to distinguish them to get, uh, uh, between together. Okay, to distinguish them. Uh, but you see that the history of SNR per per frame. So here you can see that the channel was not changing too much. But here, for instance, here you can see that channel was changing a lot. Uh, here it was changing even more because maybe it was closer to uh, to the uh, to the gateway and uh, and shadowing was was higher the, the variations of shadowing was higher so um i'm i'm showing this not only because it's fun to to to, to be able to look at uh, a lora frame uh, over time from a gateway but also because i i believe it opens um innovation on the gateway side uh, for for edge computing because with this amount of, of information, you can know whether a device is mobile or static, uh, because if the channel changes, the device is mobile. So this may be of some interest to the network. You can also know if the, that packet was interfered. You can also know if that packet was interfered with, a, with another LoRa signal or something else. So you can do a lot of um, edge processing to improve the performance of the network, and that's yeah, that's probably a, a work that needs to be done on the gateway side because there is so many information that uh, a, a network server uh, would not realistically be capable of, of computing. Uh, of oh, yeah. Okay. Code. So interesting. So you you see, you know, potentially that uh, there's going to be uh, some processing on the gateway and that informs the network server, for example, about uh, whether the device is moving or not or what um, uh, what. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Opt op op optimizing uh, ADR, mm -hmm. uh, optimizing channel plan, um, optimizing gateway location. Well, anything which is about optimizing the network. Uh, the gateway knows much more than than the network server. And here, uh, with these new chips, we have more information. So these new chips bring more uh, demodulators. Uh, they are capable of more parallel demodulation. They're also much lower power. Uh, probably the, the chip itself is, is, is close to 20 times lower power. Well, with the same set of features, if you, if you enable all features, probably only 10 times lower power. It's really small. Uh, that's, that's the size of a gateway reference design with the 1302. That's really, that's smaller. Uh, it's cheaper, etc. So it's, it's really um, a way to, to scale. The network. Nice. So, talking about reference design, so you know, we we know gateways traditionally SX thirteen oh one. I think that was your first generation um, concentrator. Yeah. Uh, there's the SX thirteen oh eight that people maybe also know as uh, the concentrator chip in the uh, the things indoor gateway. Um, now you have the SX thirteen oh two and SX thirteen oh three, um, and there's um uh, and there's a reference design can you explain what what is the reference design what is it if i am a gateway vendor for example what do you what do you get well you get uh you get a, a map well uh, plans to build this or to integrate this in your gateway so it's it's all already uh, specifically the the radio part is 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 working uh so you, you can of course uh change it improve it but you have a starting point, uh, and and all you need to do is, is to build it, and it's it comes. Uh, you don't have to pay for it. Of course, you need to buy the chips, but uh, the reference design itself is not uh, is, is is open. Okay. So that's that, that's really a way to accelerate your design as as a gateway manufacturer. Yeah. Hey, I want to go to the next topic, um, uh, but there were a few questions um, that were asked in the chat. Uh, chat is going really fast, but I uh, uh, saw a few questions coming by. One from Nick um, uh, about the collisions, um, mm -hmm. uh, and um, he says, uh, can you comment on uh, if you have uh, collisions 
uh, how do you tell if there are collisions occurring in production deployments? Um, so how, how do you know that? And a, a related uh, question is from uh, Björn uh, Roskvist. Uh, I'm not sure if I pronounce your name correctly. Um, it's, I think, a related question. He asks if all devices repeat messages, so if you have a lot of repetitions, uh, will there not be more collisions? Um, uh, yeah. And uh, would that so, not result in, uh, in more power consumption on the network overall? So I'm going to start with that one. So yes, there will be more collisions, individual collisions of, of frames, but uh, the increased the increased uh, proportion of collisions will be offset in a positive manner by the increased chances of success. So if, if you you're taking if you're repeating once, so you transmit two two frames instead of one, uh, you have two opportunities of success. Of course, you're creating more collisions, but ov overall, in the end, it's better. And if you look at 5% uh, collision rate, so not so many collisions, you, you effectively double the number of transmission that you can make to reach this 5%, which means you actually, effectively, you have four times more packets over the air for the same 5% uh, collision rate in the end. That's 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 one. That's not intuitive. Uh, that's um, but that's that's really nice. What's nice with statistics? So it's 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 usually counterintuitive. You the only thing to do is either try or simulate. But that's uh, but this you also have to simulate, right? Because around your house there there I, I can I, I'm not sure where you live, but it looks like a rural uh, area in France. Um, you don't have that much uh, LoRa traffic around that's creating a lot of collisions so you, you need you need to simulate this right of course of course yeah. of course you need to simulate and I th uh, yeah and I think um, operators who, who can who can observe collisions today are really happy because uh, it means they have a lot loads of customers uh, yeah. because it, it's really uh, thousands of devices per gateway you need to start seeing a, a fair amount of collisions and we're in, in many places we're not there yet yeah so yes we need to simulate uh, because the yeah the capacity of a gateway is yeah is tremendous compared to 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 uh, <laughs> to what you need to sustain a network. Yeah. Um, and then the other question was how do we observe collisions? Yeah. Uh, so on the network server side, uh, you, you can you, you can track the packet counter, and if you miss one 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 index in the in the frame counter, then it means you've lost this frame, and if the other frames have a good SNR, a good RSSI, then it's likely that a collision or an interference yeah. uh, made, made this uh, packet loss. On stationary devices, and on, the yeah. and, uh, and, on the, yeah. and And on the gateway side, it's slightly easier because the gateway has more metrics. The gateway can know uh, when it uh, knows uh, which uh, reception attempt it, 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 uh, it tried. Uh, the gateway knows if the if a header was received correctly, but not the payload. So that's there are more metrics on the gateway yeah. side to to find out collisions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, next, I want to go to uh, um, the new or new uh, sort of say modulation. Uh, what people know yeah. uh, maybe uh, as LoRa E, LoRa Evolution. Mm -hmm. um, it's now called uh, LoRa uh, FHSS, Frequency Hopping yeah. Spread Long Spectrum. Range. Yeah. Long range frequency being. Uh, what is it? One, one picture uh, to show what it looks like. Do you see? Do you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, great. So, uh, so thank you, Johan, for your basically your introduction uh, and uh, on on Laura. Uh, I, I remember yesterday, uh, no, on Monday, you showed yeah. one graph like this. Yeah. So, be um, uh, an SF12 frame, so chirps. Up chirps, down chirps, modulated chirps. That would be an SF7 frame, so we'd need to zoom in to to see anything. But um, and 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 below, that would be uh, an LR FHSS uh, frame. So there are many differences and there are commonalities. So to start with the commonalities, it's spread spectrum. So the information is spread in frequency. Uh, uh, so LoRa is chirp, spread spectrum, so linear uh, frequency increase versus versus time. And uh, LR FHSS is frequency hopping, so we hop, we stay on a given frequency, and then we hop. Uh, the first three 
longer hops here correspond to the preamble and header. And that part on LoRa would be this part. So the first unmodulated symbols, uh, synchronization symbols, and then the first part here, which, which tells the length of the payload, etc. And then the rest is the data. Uh, and you see that it's slightly uh, lower data rate than SF12. It's the, the two frames here, well, the, the three frames here have the same payload length. So it's slightly um, uh, lower data rate. And the, the good advantage, really the advantage of LRFHSS is that it, it has higher capacity uh, compared to SF12 because that is, this hopping sequence is random. So you can definitely put a lot of um, such frames in parallel and receive them on the gateway side. So that's what we've designed this for. Uh, so it's higher capacity than SF12. It's not really higher capacity than SF7 because it's, SF7 is, is really shorter. So you, can, you could stack a lot more and you have many different channels to do so. So that's, that's, that's a bit different, but compared to SF12 or SF11, you have more capacity. Uh, so it's really good. Uh, no, I'm back to unsharing. So it's it's really good for when you need range, when you need a lot of devices at that long range, and you and you cannot afford to to put more gateways because if you put more gateways, you you the ADR will be able to uh, will be able to um, so yeah, FHSS is is a part of the of some uh, gateways reference designs. Uh, not the uh, 1303 or 1302, but the V2 reference designs uh, are compatible with um, with LRFHSS. So that's a, okay. Uh, uh, so uh, sorry, back, back, to, back to, to the interest. So, so the interest is really yeah. when, when you when you don't have a lot of gateways. Yeah. Uh, and and need long range and a, a lot of devices for that. So right. one very good example for that is satellites. Yeah. Satellites, you don't have a lot of gateways because you don't have a lot of satellites. You don't have a lot of transmit power if you're using the unlicensed bands. So you need the, the long range and almost all devices would be at the equivalent of SF 10, 11 or 12 talking to a satellite. And yeah. there you need the additional capacity. Uh, the other example would be uh, maybe smart cities because you, it's a uh, operating network from uh, a limited number of places and you're talking to loads of deep indoor nodes. So that's, that's the other example. Okay, and um, do you need other devices? Uh, can I use existing uh, LoRa N devices, or do I need a new antenna, or do I yeah. need a new chip? Well, I know the answers, to, but I'm just going to ask you anyway. Yeah, yeah. So to talk to a satellite, you probably need uh, a special antenna, or at least an antenna that points to the sky. Uh, but apart from that, you can use uh, existing uh, Semtech or, or STM devices. So uh, all of all of this, uh, so uh, S, starting from the S six twelve sixty one, all these devices can have uh, this uh, LRFHSS modulation. Interesting, and it also is now part of the um, uh, uh, regional parameters, right? In uh, LoRaWAN, so there are um, it, it needs an, it, it's a new band um, with uh, in the so you have EU A six eight for you know traditional LoRa traditional data rates. And there's also now, if you want to use FHSS, then um, uh, you you need to uh, you need to account for that on the end device on the lower WAN level, right? Different data rates uh, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so it's part so it's part of the it's no part of the uh, lower WAN certification. It's uh, you, it's it's a different uh, channel. You 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 create a channel with that data rate. Uh, but it, it may be overlapping. It may be the same on overlapping the bands of existing uh, LoRa channels. Because since the modulation is different, it's not going to hurt a lot. Or you can create a channel which has different frequencies. That's 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 up to you. Yeah. Cool. Hey, uh, next is um, I want to go uh, more about um, uh, uh, so talk about more as your uh, role as uh, the vice chair of the LoRa Alliance Technical Committee. Um, yep. So we we also know each other from technical committee, right? We sit on the same meetings, and uh, um, but can you can you explain to people watching a little bit more about um, what does the the technical committee do and um, uh, what is the uh, what is the role and um, uh, how does it work? Yeah. So 
So obviously the role of the technical committee is to produce technical specifications. So it produces all LoRa one, uh, LoRa Alliance technical specifications. And usually for each uh, technical specification, a dedicated subgroup is, res is responsible for that specification. So there's one for the protocol, which we call LoRa one link layer. And that's the, 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 the most, probably the most known, uh, well-known uh, specification. Uh, there's one backend interface specification. Uh, there is there are a set of specification for multicast, firmware upgrade over the air, uh, application uh, package discovery, uh, and probably uh, there's one specification, of course, for regional parameters, uh, which how you adapt the protocol to different regions in the world. Um, and we are now working on more specification, for, but for instance, um, application server to network server interface, but that's, that's going to be part of the backend interface, uh, very likely. We're, we're working on, on relay, so expanding the specification to, to add relay operation, so from a device to a relay to a gateway, that, that part we're going to add. Um, and that's uh, we work uh, with face-to-face uh, -face meetings when we have the chance to do that, and and a lot of uh, web meetings now. We have, uh, of course, a collaborative uh, collaborative platform to to do that. We we are open. Uh, the technical committee itself is open to uh, sponsor and adopter members of the Lora Alliance and the and the working groups. Are open to all members uh, of the of the Lora Alliance. Yeah, uh, uh, sponsor and uh, contributor members of the Lora Alliance. Yeah, you can join the TC. for the technical yeah. committee. Yeah, for the technical committee, but before the subgroups for for task force, it's it's possible uh, for for any member to join. Yeah, yeah. And um, nice. So um, I have uh, one more question uh, about. Um, the FHSS uh, coming in from uh, Michael. He asks, um, uh, are there already uh, stacks that are supporting uh, FHSS for the end devices? Do, do you need a special version of LoRa Mac Node, for example, uh, to use this? Or how does that work practically if people want to use this? Yes, you do. Uh, that 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 uh, version is not um, available yet uh, uh, to, to to anyone in open source. But uh, for interested uh, customer, we have a, we have a, a first adopter program that uh, so people can exper can experiment with it. So of course it's it's working. Uh, there are uh, gateways that receive LRFHSS packets from many uh, gateway manufacturers and they are satellites which receive LRH FHSS packets from 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 our, our chip so it's it's available it's not uh, it's not completely publicly available yet yeah. it's we are in an um, adoption and uh, trial phase right and then a follow up question from uh, Daniel about the the bands to use and i think that's that's a really good question also because we know you know worldwide uh, there are different uh, regions uh, defined mm -hmm. in or when, and that's also because the uh, sub gigahertz ISM band is not harmonized. Uh, so in the US and in Europe and in Asia and everywhere, you need to use different frequencies. But if you're if you're talking about uh, satellite communication, um, how does that work? Because these satellites they fly all over the world. Uh, are they switching frequencies? And and what does that mean for end devices? Uh, is there can they still transmit on the frequency that they are certified for, or is there a another frequency that they use? No, so exactly, the satellites will switch their uh, receiving frequency um, and the transmit frequency also, uh, whenever they transmit, but uh, so far the satellites only receive. Uh, I, I forgot to mention that LRFHSS is an uplink only technology. So on the downlink, you still need to, to receive with uh, LoRa uh, because uh, LoRa is much easier to receive. You need the gateway to receive LRFHSS for, for complexity reasons. So the satellite knows uh, where it is over over Earth, it knows it, it knows its flight plan uh, very precisely. So it knows if it's if if it's over Europe or over US or over Asia, and then it it, it will switch accordingly its uh, frequency of operation. The end device um, will just do the same as they were doing with the terrestrial network. So they they need to use a frequency with it which is authorized, uh, license or unlicensed in 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 the region they are they are operating. Okay, so the, the the satellite knows where it where it is flying over Earth, and then it just switches frequency to listen on, basically. Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay, so uh, um, yeah, we're gonna wrap this up. Um, uh, one more thing about uh, what you said in the beginning about the challenges, uh, this more in integration, onboarding, and things like that. Um, how does what is really the role of LoRaWAN here? Because LoRaWAN is also you know a standard for transporting data, um, but it doesn't it doesn't uh, uh, specify what the payload format is to use. So it's not like like lightweight M2M or uh, something that it says okay you know you have to if you want to send a temperature value then it has to be in this format. So that is open. Um, so. It also creates a lot of new, uh, you know, freedom for device makers. Is that a good thing or a bad thing, in your opinion? If you talk about, you know, ease of onboarding, ease of integration, uh, and uh, what does LoRaWAN do to make um, integrations and onboarding easier? So, um, first of all, it, it's we LoRaWAN is mainly defining transport layer. I think it's a good thing because it's. It's a way to to have economies of scale in the networks. It's 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 not really interesting to have a nationwide uh, network coverage for one for metering, one for asset tracking, one for uh, smart industry, one for smart cities. It's bad. It's 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 much cheaper to have one net, one network to uh, to um, to fulfill all these applications. So that's that's the reason why it's been it's been defined like that, uh, separated from the application. Then, uh, of course, Laura Laura Alliance is working on 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 adaptation layers or ties with with existing protocols. So, for instance, we are working on on, on having uh, wireless MBUS over Laura One, uh, DLMS over Laura One, uh, some IP. V6, uh, V6, sorry, uh, header compression, so so that IP can be over LoRa One. So all this uh, vertical application, well, if you can call IP uh, a vertical applic an application, uh, but it's 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 a way to uh, to integrate with 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 any application. Uh, and and the role of the LoRa of the LoRa Alliance is then to to make this interface, this integration, easy 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 and uh, and and work. Uh, the, the other role of, of the LoRa Alliance is to make our set of specification complete so that everything is, 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 is specified. So anything is interoperable with anything else. That's, that's, we're, we're on this path. For instance, uh, there was no gateway to network standard, standardized interface. So we're doing that in the LoRa Alliance so that any gateway right out of the box can be plugged to any network server. Uh, which is operational, and I'm sure that uh, TTN is going to like that uh, because it's, it's going to make your life and the life of your users and customers yeah. easier. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that brings me to my final question. Um, so, what are the what are the, the top things that the LoRa Alliance is going to work on in the next few years? So, what are the the most important things that are now in the roadmap? We saw, you know, the release of LoRaWAN 104 last year. And the uh, certification uh, test tool, um, and I think that's super helpful for uh, device makers. Um, you already uh, scratched the surface on, on a few things, but what is, in short, the yeah? What are what are the next priorities uh, for us in the Lora Alliance? So, in short, we are going to uh, publish. Uh, I hope uh, by the end of this year, the next version of the Lora One protocol, version one one one. Which is, which is going to bring um, security improvements. So we're going to apply good practices in security. Uh, it's not that the previous version is broken, it's just that it's, it's, it's better. Uh, it's also better handling um, confirmed frames, for instance, you know which frame you're confirming, et cetera. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it has, um, so on top of better security, it has uh, active roaming, so handover roaming. So today we only have passive roaming, that's, that's good enough. But handover roaming is, is, a, is a way to further optimize the networks when a device is roaming, uh, especially internationally. And we are, we are improving a little bit uh, Class B, uh, we'll, and we, we will be adding a, a couple of features um, by, by, by the end of the year. So that's, uh, that's really, um, yeah, that, that's going to be a, a milestone for, 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 for performance. And I, and I think that people will migrate naturally with, to, toward this version. Uh, pretty quickly. Uh, we, we are also working on adding relay and device to device. 
uh, operation, which which is really a market need. So it relates to to completely to expand coverage at at a low cost, and uh, and and especially at a low cost without power. So uh, battery operated relays. So that's the cost of installation, which I was thinking about. And device to device is a way to control directly with low latency um, and sometimes even without the network uh, from a sensor to uh, an actuator in case of alarms, in case of uh, yeah, whatever. But uh, we have we have needs for that and we are going to work on that. And, and as I said, we're going also to, 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 to finish to, 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 to the puzzle of our, of our certification uh, uh, set by doing a gateway to network server uh, interface and, and, and also a network server to application server interface. Yeah. Well, those are four really interesting things and uh, important, I think, for the ecosystem. Yeah. All right. With that, yeah. um, I want to thank you very much, Olivier, for uh, for your time. And um, there are a, a few more questions also in the chat. Um, but I think the best thing that people can do is to reach out to you here on Hopin. Um, uh, also, yeah. I, uh, I would like to ask if you want to join, you know, maybe later today at the, one of the networking events, uh, the informal networking events, where also people can uh, ask additional questions to you. It's great to have you here. And yeah, sure. um, you want to say anything else before we stop? No, thank you, Johan, and, and congratulations to this uh, for organizing this this conference. It's really it's really great. Really appreciated. Thanks a lot. Okay. Um, and uh, Leo, this is a real flower. I uh, got it from my mother, so uh, so you know. All right, <laughs> bye bye. Okay, bye to everybody, and and we can meet on the on the booth, yeah. on the same tank booth. Bye bye.